you, you know? No. So, so yeah, you came to Occupy for, for a reason. I came to Occupy because there are X amount of wars going on in the world. There's, uh, there's people that don't have health care. There are people born into debt. And because I don't think that the current systems that govern our world are done based on logic, reason, and humanity. They are done based on profit. So I went there for an educational experience. That's what I wanted. What were you doing before you started? I'm working in kitchens, going to college, you know, right. fulfilling the basic constructs that society said. And then I moved to an island and I lived there for a week. I learned more on that island in a week than I learned in any school, than I learned from any television, than I learned from any person. About myself, about the universe, about nature, about unity, about caring about mother, than I ever expected. So after that, I, it was more of like, it was spirituality, it was a religious experience. And going into the woods by myself was going on a mission quest and actually attaining it. Right. And so I found out about October2011.org. I agreed with most of the things it was saying. I wanted to get down there because I saw people that wanted to do change. I wanted to see that change. I want to see that happen. Right. Once you unity, yes, I want. But one of the things, I wanted to go up here and speak to all these people because I don't know what it's like to be a woman. I don't know what it's like to be that. I grew up in Maine. I don't even know what black people looked like before I came to the city. And it was it was eye-opening for me. I, I don't know what it's like to be an immigrant. I don't know what it's like to be Palestinian. I don't know what it's like to be Israeli. I don't know what it's like. You got a better opera, you got a better idea now though, right? I no. 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 No, I don't. I don't have a fucking no. clue. And I'll never understand. And that's the thing that I've been fighting for to try and understand and get new shoes. But I realized that I can never wear those shoes. I can only wear my own. I can never be that person. I can, I, I can try to grasp it. I can listen. I can fight for equality. I can fight for humanity and unity for everybody and everybody be treated the same. But I cannot know what it's like to be looked at and be told that, or be looked at as if I was going to rob someone. I don't know what it's, look, what it's like to be looked at and be thought of as a terrorist. Right. Or for somebody to hold their person aside. And I will never understand that. I will never understand that perspective. I need to acknowledge that. And just fight for social justice across the board. It's well, you look a little bit like a white banker. So maybe you, they, you do, people will think you're robbing them. If you go in the wrong neighborhood, you are the antagonist. Well, I, I, I suppose that, you know, I've walked into the harshest neighborhoods. Nothing ever happens. Right. I've talked to, you know, I've, I, it, it doesn't, the stereotypes are the fucking portrayal of society. Yeah, there are places where gangs shoot up at each other. And there are places that people are indoctrinated with hate. But I, I'm not one of those people. I'm not the one that was raised for hate. My parents raised me to respect everybody equally and trust everybody until they give you a reason not to. Those were the only two rules my family had for me. Outside of that, I wasn't raised with religion, I wasn't raised with, you know, with stereotypes, I wasn't raised with politics. Kyle, what, so you're going to go up to Maine? Yeah, I'm going to go see my family. And, and, and so the ideals that you came looking for, are, are, you, uh, are you confident that, that you, you still you have the capacity to absorb the, the uh, or the patience maybe to, to, to uh, wait for others to, to get that same passion? Do you, do you think they will? Others to get the passion for equality and humanity? Yeah, and you know, yeah, right, and actually do it. Me. Well, right. Like, we just had a talk about this exact concept right. and how people don't go into the community and don't organize and don't talk to the blacks and don't talk to the Latinos and don't talk to these other aspects of society and get them on the same page because we're afraid of going and doing outreach. We're afraid of talking to people. We're still afraid of saying hello to a stranger. You're so stuck in security culture mentality and fear of agent provocateurs that we're afraid to talk to strangers. I, so breaking that barrier is going to be a lot of fucking work. One at a time. But, you know, the only way you can do that is to stop being afraid of yourself and to stop assuming the worst of people. you got to fight for that equality. you got to work for it. You've got to just continue to be the example that we want to see in society, especially as occupiers. That's what I really want to see. I want to see... I want to see 
I don't want to see people go with 50, 60 people and go on a march. I want to see 50, 60 people go out in the streets and make a goal to talk to 10 new people about our issues. I want to see that. That will get shit done. Marching? No. Talking? Yes. And that will really get work done. That would create an entirely, that would make this movement go wildfire. Yeah. But right. until we see people actually do that, we'll continue to have our select infrastructure grow smaller and smaller and smaller. And we'll continue to strategize, and we'll continue to plan, we'll continue to talk and coordinate. And we'll come out for these gatherings, and we'll plan for that one march that's going to be in DC every single year, or whatever that may be. But we won't get work done. We won't get that change done. I realize that the vast majority of society is caught by social norms. The norm of society now is to stare at a box and watch somebody else live their life instead of living your own. We were actually taught and raised in a society that says, don't live, watch somebody else. That's so sick. I mean, if you want reality, turn on a reality TV show, right? Yeah. yeah. Or, it's actually duality TV, I call it. Our, our, even our... Even our media news organizations Enough. teach us more about American Idol than America. Yeah. We don't have transparency. People say that Obama has the most transparent government that ever has been in America. Bullshit. When they tell me everything that happened on 9-11, then I'll know. When the Pentagon is open and we can read what they're doing, then I'll know. When we can just simply access the information and they are required to put them on, on put everything that they do online so that everybody can access it instead of having whistleblowers go to jail for two and a half years in solitary confinement for no good reason without trial, then I will know. Then I will know that we have a fair and just government. Until then, it's a facade, it's a lie, it's a game, it's a racket, it will continue to tear down society, it will continue to have us consume and perpetuate the same thing that these quote unquote one percenters who are caught in the same system that we are will continue to They are in the same system. They're stuck. They're so what stuck. do you think of climate change, Kyle? And what do you think? You, you... That's not even the problem anymore. Climate so, change is a huge issue. Oh my God. Well, climate change is a huge issue. But I mean... That, that goes into the bigger picture of infrastructure within industry. Industry is where climate change really is fucking happening. Right. I mean, that comes into the way that we live life. That comes into our consumption. You've got the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. That is a patch of plastic the size of Texas in the Pacific okay. Dyer. So, so, so climate change is real, and, and we, we're agreeing on that. So, so do, yeah. do people think that it, that it is? You see some polls that say that... that uh, 65% of people think that climate change is real and, and needs to be addressed. Well, you see, that's, that's in the U.S. You have organizations like API, the American Petroleum Institute, that lobbies politicians and does campaigns to deny climate change with enough people so that nothing gets changed in Congress. But it's not even up to Congress, it's up to the U.N. And the U.N. just had the real plus 20 that was supposed to discuss the issue of climate change, the issue of the acidity level of the ocean rising from our carbon emissions, you know, the fact that crustaceans are losing their shells, you know, and that it's, the acidity level rises too much, then we could actually see the plankton die. If that happens, we're all screwed. That's 70% of our oxygen. But you know what they did? Nothing. The multinational corporations were the big majority there, and they buy our UN just like they buy our US. They buy every single institution that they can because they run on profit. And efficiency does not mean ecology. It does not mean what will make this world a better place. Efficiency means what makes them create enough surplus so that they can make an extra buck. If they have to outsource to China or outsource to Africa and use slave wage labor to create our material goods or use toxic chemicals to produce what we wear and what we eat with, then they'll do it. And they don't care. So they, I, we go back to they and the, re, the duality. They, the, the corporations are, we, as you mentioned it earlier, we are the consumers that, that buy the consumer, the, the uh, corporation's products. Yes. So that information you're talking about getting out and spreading a word mouth to mouth, uh, one person telling 10 people, ten, one person telling two people, whatever it happens to be, the, the numbers continue to grow. Yes. So as we get information, are you hopeful that within the next year or two we can have a, a much larger turnout 
uh, and, and not necessarily go anywhere to turn out, but just to turn out at the vote, turn out at the, the cash register. Are, are, is that where we're headed in the next year or two? Do you, are you hopeful? Have a choice. I'm hopeful. I, I, I wouldn't be out here if I didn't have hope. Okay. I mean, this is the most beautiful thing Occupy has ever done, other than Zuccotti Park. So this, you, mean, you mean Philadelphia? This gathering is, oh, okay. I'm glad and you working group after working group after working group for three, four days nonstop talking about this stuff. But talking about how do we get this out and what do we need to do and what are our next steps. Right. Big principle, think globally, act locally. So you will see mom and pop start talking about big business within the next year. You will see people walking down the street. I, I, I see it now, and, I, yeah. and, and we haven't seen each other much, but I do. I, I, people are talking, and I talk to people at the donut shop or people at the bank or whatever, and they know, and, and they, they want something to happen, but, but they, they they're not empowered. empowered. Right. Yes. The only way that we're really going to get that empowerment is when we have the Congress that is involved, and when we get rid of the bipartisan system, this facade of us them mentality that is ruled by, controlled by, and propagated by the industries that buy our politicians. Right. And until we get rid of that, and we get people to realize that they do have an option, and until we give them that alternative option. We will not be able to overthrow the oligarchish tyranny of the planet. And we will not be able to control these corporations until our United Nations is actually empowered enough to do something about these billionaires and their profiteering. I mean, they will continue to let industry go in the trend that it does because they worry more about quarter profits, quarterly profits, than they do about a quarter of a century sustainability. That's where our problems lie. You know, that they care more about the dollar than they do about our earth. And until we can get people in power that do not make money, that until we can eliminate money, like it's not get money out of politics, it's get money out of the system. Just get rid of money in the system that facilitates our planet. Because if that continues to be the growing trend that we follow and are indoctrinated in, then we will continue to think of money first and people last, or the planet lasts, until we can, it, Socrates said it best, the only way to reach utopia is when philosopher kings are the rulers of society. That's people that live, go without money, they get food, water, and shelter, they are not allowed lust, they are not allowed sex, they are not allowed, you know, they are not allowed family, they are allowed to do a service for the people, and that's it. Now, until we get people, and that, you know, the last time I think of as being a little excessive, but until they can focus on their job rather than making enough money so that they can keep their Did you job. you say allowed to? That term is yes. a little excessive? Okay. All right. Well, well, I'm yeah. glad you said, yeah, that's allowed what... Allowed to. Yeah, yeah. Until they are allowed to just do their job rather than right. continue yeah. to... Well, until they understand what their what ramifications their actions have. Well, yes. I, I, I think anyone, if, if, if they're saying, hey, the money that I get is no longer a currency for what I need and for what I want and for what I chose. The, the, the money will not buy fresh water if there is none. The money will not buy a fresh, a, a, a clean planet. Not necessarily. Well, and they'll always, they'll well always, if there is none. They always <laughs> find a security or a cognitive dissonance to justify what they need. They will always say, well, we well, can who buy is they? technology. Who is they? Who is no, they? Anybody. These are people that are raised evil? No. no. How do, where do they come from that they have this, this mindset? Well, that mindset comes from living in a society and a structure that perpetuates it. And we are raised in a society that says, get a job, go to college, make enough money, get a white picket fence house, and raise your kids, have a family, and live a nuclear life. That's Western culture here in America, essentially. Uh, they are raised in private schools, they are raised in privatized way of life, they are raised with having no less than $200,000 in their bank account their entire life. They are raised without having to worry, having to worry about survivability and worrying about the that's the, that's yes. the core of my question. If, the, if, if they witness the planet toxifying, they have to worry, don't they? They have to. They have no. to. No? no, you don't think that they'll see it. They, they don't, don't do smart anything enough? they can. They'll say. Well, they'll, but what if they? What if they? If, they don't if, if the science shows them, which it's about, which it's getting stronger and stronger, right? Oh, the science is getting no. The science is infallible. It is, in, it is next to infallible about this. So, so, so therefore, if if we have uh, enough 
evidence. Evidence and, and also enough uh, empowerment to demonstrate to the people that are consuming the product as well as those that are driving the bus over the cliff, I believe they'll hit the brakes or turn the bus around. It, the most, at least we take the steering wheel away from them. And that's what you're, you're talking about. Is we, we, to take the steering wheel away from those who are in charge now, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a fight. Yeah. But to educate those that are in charge, I think those are the, the outreach that we have to do, I think is essentially that's who we have to talk to. So, I... I threat at the time. Now, in 1981, the greatest threat was nuclear weapons because it was the Cold War. We had the Cuban Missile Crisis or the Turkey Missile Crisis. It may still that's, be that's, nuclear, maybe, it, no, maybe our most immediate. It's a huge problem. I mean, yeah. we've got enough that'll blow up the planet five times. But that doesn't relate to them. It does not relate to the people in the cars driving down the street. It does not relate well, to Well, Fukushima does, though. And, and, you know, because... And, 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 and the nuclear power plants, the nuclear industry. I mean... That does play into people and that's... It looms. Problem. Well, our biggest problem is with the entertainment industry. That's the greatest threat to peace. People being lulled into apathy and complacency, staring at a box. That is the greatest threat to A lot of people in the in entertainment industry, and, that, and that's that's who I'm actually going to talk to, is the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. are, are uh, uh, Matt Damon. Uh, yeah. Uh, Matt, like, there's there's a lots lot of, of good people. Lots there's of a lot of good people in there. So but we're going to try to rally them. them. It's not them. It's the commercial aspect of it. It's the fact that you get fed for a 30-minute program, seven to nine minutes of bullshit. You sit down to watch your show, and you are interrupted every five minutes dealing with three minutes of somebody telling you, you aren't good enough. Or a then, ticker tape across the bottom that, that tells you what you should be afraid of. Exactly. You know, or, or that if you don't have this product, you aren't cool. Right. And if you drink this product, you can fly. Right. I mean, just loading your head with bullshit right. so that you will consume. Right. And that is the whole point of it. It pushes and indoctrinates people into the capitalistic consumeristic monster that is destroying our planet. And that is why my problem is with the television or with the radio station. Because Comcast owns every single radio station. Every major radio station is owned by a corporation. And all of our television shows are come out of six corporations. So, I mean, if that's not a joint monopoly to destroy our way of life or to brainwash our way of life, if people don't realize how Orwellian this is, they are completely 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 wrong well they're I'm asleep mo mo most they're people asleep. are asleep we, we hope asleep. that most people are asleep because then we can wake them up yeah i like one of my things is like i just want to go up to people i wish this worked i wish just grabbing people by the shoulders shaking and yelling at them worked yeah. it doesn't though that's the problem that doesn't work what only all, the only thing that works is through making people realize the state of urgency that we are at this, the literal state of how huge this problem is. Because people are more worried about gas than they are about what's going on in Congress. People are more worried about you know, getting their, to their, or having a job, having a job, period. The way of life, if people don't realize how Orwellian this is, they are completely, completely wrong. Well, they're I'm asleep. Mo mo most they're people asleep. are asleep. We, we hope asleep. that most people are asleep because then we can wake them up. Yeah, I like one of my things is like I just want to go up to people. I wish this worked. I wish just grabbing people by the shoulders, shaking and yelling at them worked. Yeah. It doesn't though. That's the problem. That doesn't work. What only all, the only thing that works is through making people realize the state of urgency that we are at. This, the literal state of how huge this problem is. Because people are more worried about gas than they are about what's going on in Congress. People are more worried about you know, getting their, to their, or having a job, having a job, period. It, and they it, are about how our world is facilitated. We've got this individualistic perspective that people are locked in. They've got their cell phones that has their friends on that list. They've got their television show that they sit down and watch every night after they get out of work. You know, 